Hey, today I am freaking out. I am panicking because I have about 24 hours to pack up the second booth for the West Coast and send it off. And if you have no idea of what I'm talking about, you can check out this video up here or here or here or there or there to uh, catch up on why, uh, why I'm building a second booth and, and why I'm panicking about it. So here's the plan. I'm gonna, I have the tent set up here in the driveway. I'm gonna do kind of like a dry fitting of things. Make sure that my tables and my displays that I've been working on all kind of work together and try to like sort of figure out what the flow of the of the booth is gonna be. You know, it has to feel, it has to flow. It has to feel like a, like a store that you want to walk into and shop. Also, again, try not to try not to focus on my eye. It's still not the greatest, but it's getting better. It's just still kind of flaky and kind of flaky and reddish. So just the um, that's a loud bird. Anyway, that's it. I think the bird's just trying to say that it's a beautiful day, and it is. I mean, 64 and overcast. Good enough ask for better weather to be doing this for the staging of my booth out here. All right, so I got all of my tables out here. I have a big long table, a square table, the folding skinny tables, one pedestal, bar hide round table. Some of the key things that we like to consider when setting up our booth are, um, let me, First, like I wanna, I wanna wow. wow. I wanna impress. I wanna make sure that it looks impressive, that it looks different and unique. I kind of touched on that in my last video, uh, making my own displays, making it look like my work. Second, like I mentioned earlier, flow. I want the booth to have enough room to walk in and experience. It needs to have a an entrance and an exit strategy. So openness is very important to us. Um, and then also I think it has to be convenient for me, the vendor. I need to be able to have storage for my inventory, for my overstock, and I need to be able to um, run it without fear of the weather. So sun and rain protection. And uh, the other thing is wind. Wind is always a factor in these things. So make sure that you have, make sure that, uh, so making sure that my uh, tables are secure, that my tent is secure, and that my displays are not gonna, are not gonna be flimsy and blow over if a gust of wind comes up. My ideas are great and all, but I am not, honestly, I'm not the expert in this. I usually have to consult with Marcus about uh, flow. The things that we talked about. Flow, uh, what was the other? Wow, and safety, is that what I called it? Something like that. So here with us is uh, Marcus' expertise. All right, initial reactions of my flow floor plan here, go. I mean, love the space. You could even get a wheelchair in here. Yes, that's very important. It is. It does come up. Uh, whew, you really have to uh, use your imagination at this point, but yeah, come <laughs> along. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing is that I need to make sure that I stay flexible because not every event is gonna be the same. Sometimes you're gonna be put in a corner if you're lucky. Some other times you're gonna have enough space between you and your neighbor to stick out a little bit outside of the booth, you know, within reason. Uh, and some other times you're gonna have space behind your booth for like, to keep your crap behind there, you know, to keep your back stock back there. But other times you're not gonna have any of those. So you need to make sure that you are nimble enough to adapt to those situations. That is why I'm making it a point to carry these small folding tables and this smaller pedestal table because I can easily move them around if I need to depending on the situation of the show. Gosh, I'm just spending so much knowledge. It's just exhausting. It's so annoying. So obviously we have no wow factor in it yet because I haven't put the, the uh, displays on, on the tables and all that crap, uh, but we'll get there. So this is a good setup. Like I said, we need to stay flexible with it. Be able to pick it up and move depending on the situation at the show. You might have a corner, which is like the premium spot, but you can't rely on that. Like you just gotta, we're making some progress. Look at this. We got the table for the maps over here. I got one, one of the state ornament cabinets hung up and then over here the big table these backdrops that Marcus designed they're gonna be great for they're gonna be great for giving me a little bit of room in the back here to keep my uh you know the stuff that I need like my uh snacks my snacks <laughs> bags snacks bags checkout related things my reader my phone uh things like that by the way here's the final look of the folding tables 
all that work put into them with the masking tape and the paper and spray painting them for days and then I ended up designing putting on this wooden tabletop across and these uh, side panels to kind of like dress it up make it a little bit more us you know pretty cool so now they don't look as much like Amazon right <laughs> Right. <laughs> so now they don't look as much like they just came out of an Amazon warehouse. Now, you see this space down here. I got this tablecloth because that creates back uh, storage. It creates storage for me. I can hide crap under the table and nobody will know. In here, I'm going to I'm probably going to keep up I'm probably gonna keep the the uh, the back stock, the inventory, all the extra inventory for maps, for ornaments, for my kits, as much as possible. I may not be able to cram it all in here, but I'm gonna try it too. The rest of it, probably underneath the other table, the table with the maps, and I'm gonna try to put as much inventory for people to have on the folding tables as well. Let me get out of here. So it got a bit, it got a bit dark on us and a little bit cold for me too. But uh, things are moving along. Now we are moving on. We have moved on to the uh, checklist part of the, of this production, which is making sure that we have all the inventory for all the other kits and all the displays for each one of those kits, such as what uh, Marcus is working over here. He's working on making sure that we have all the camper displays making sure that the price tag is very visible and in people's face. We got the state ornament cabinets hung up from the tent, safely secured, hopefully. We got the vintage computer over here, the Adirondack chair, my pagoda, the nest lamp hung up from the ceiling of the tent, the uh, desktop zeppelin, bird feeder, not the final spot, but we're working it out. The picnic table over here next to the Adirondack chair, the big one. Nothing, nothing is where they're gonna be sitting. Nothing is in their final spot. Right now, we're just making sure that we have all the displays that we need for all the product that I'm bringing. Uh, the cathedral lamp looks really good, which, uh, believe it or not, is... Ah! We had a bird feeder display. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> it's arrived. That's because that build quality is just so good. But anyway, I was going to say, believe it or not, the cathedral has been powered by a USB light bulb. Like, nobody told me that you could power an actual bulb by USB, USB brick. Like, what? I need to, I need to print out, um, I need to make sure that I have my sales sheets that I use to keep up with inventory. So for every sale that I make, I mark it off on this list. And that way, by the end of the show, I know what I sold and what I need to restock on. On this sheet, I just cross the number for the item sale that I make. And then I also need to print out the list of maps that I carry. I like to I like to keep a list in front of customers so that people can quickly read through the list if they don't want to go through my bins, so they can just read this list and see if I carry the city that they're looking for. This is the list of US cities available, double-sided. And now to keep my list of maps clean and dry at all times, out in the weather, I'm gonna laminate them. Where did I put that thing? Laminate it and keep it by the bins of maps. Wow. Things are coming along great. Look at it. Look at it. It's taken us hours, hours to get to this point. And like, we're not even close to being done yet because after we're done with this part of the process, we have to tear it all down, pack it up, and load it on a crate. Seal it and have it ready because tomorrow, <laughs> the trucking company is coming tomorrow to pick up the crate with all this stuff to take it to the West Coast. And like, I swear, this is not typically how these things go. Like figuring out your booth setup is the one time thing. Once you have it all figured out, then you just get to like put it together at each event. You do minor tweaks, you know, figuring out, making sure that you test out the flow, you know, making sure that things are working the way that you want it to be, making sure that customers are experiencing your work the way that you intended it. <sighs> but yeah, this, this setup, I think it covers all the things that I was looking for. The wow factor, I think it's a very eye catching because, I mean, 
mean, I don't have to explain it. You know, come on. <laughs> so it'll get attention. That's for sure. I'm, I'm not. I'm not worried about that. Second, the flow. Making sure that people can walk in, look around, not stumble on on each other. I like to let them do their thing, figure out how they want to experience my booth, and I just sit back and I I just sit back and wait for them to like if they have any questions. But like, don't let me know. Like, people are not dumb, right? I'm keeping my options open. I still, I know that I can move things around if I need to, to improve the flow in case I am in a place where like my neighbor is like right up against me on each side or something like that. Or I don't have any room behind my booth. There is a clear entrance to the booth and ideally if there's some room in between me and my neighbor, there's a good, there's a good exit path here. I'm far enough from them. I feel like I'm not gonna be on top of them, harassing them to like check me out or whatever. Um, and then third, comfort. For me, I feel good. I have plenty of storage under the tables, under my shelves. I even have my personal space behind these backdrops to store my snacks, to store my water, to store whatever I need throughout the day and keep it out of sight. I feel confident that the tables and the shelves are gonna stay in place in case of gusty winds. I feel confident that I'm gonna stay dry because I can quickly pick up my stuff and move it away from the elements. Yeah, this is, I, I don't wanna jinx it, but I think it's gonna work out. For right now, I feel like there's no end in sight. Marcus went to pick up some pizza because <laughs> there's no time for anything else. Sorry about the chaos in this episode, in this video, but I think I'm gonna say goodbye to you now. Uh, I'll keep you posted. We'll see how this goes. If you made it this far into the video, hopefully that means that you liked it. Consider giving it a thumbs up. That really helps. I appreciate you hanging out with me today in this chaotic moment of my life. Uh, I can't wait for this to be over. I can't wait to have my life back. Um, yeah, I will see you on the next one. Bye. Don't forget about the most important part, dinner. <laughs> All right, that's it, bye.